Hello my YouTube friends. I want to thank you for all the great comments and share with you the most recent uh, movie because anywhere, even a small space, can be a film set. This was the opening shot for Skyline Drifters. <laughs> you in a bit closer but this is my dining table and this is an ironing board. I have uh, propped the track up so that we get some good guaranteed drifts on the corners and as I'll show you closer the buildings I'm using they're called low relief so get try and get one in the light there uh, and that's what they look like on the back they're just made of cardboard but the main thing is as you can see they're very thin so they make a perfect, they make a perfect building to go on the low backdrop just around here. Now I'm going to use a GoPro to get in a little bit closer and show you what's going on. But one, one thing I will say is lighting, as much lighting as you can, that's, that's really important. All these lights I've picked up, brand new, uh, I think they work out at about um, 25 pounds each, which is about 25 dollars. Um, I found them on eBay, but you'll get them on Amazon. As you can see, this is a, a row of LED lights, and it's very effective. Very good, but definitely the more lighting, the better the results will be. And a great use of a soup tin. Here we go, it's just a soup tin. But it also becomes a really useful camera tripod for when you want to get some uh, interesting shots and you haven't got a tripod just at that right angle. So when I was filming this, I have used two cameras. I've used the GoPro to get overhead shots, and this little camera here, which if you're gonna do some filming, I advise you to uh, get one. I'll put a link in the box. It's called a Polaroid Cube. And again, it's about 99 pounds, what's that, 100 dollars, 100 euro, somewhere around there. Don't quote me on exchange rates, because I, I don't really know. But the good thing about that camera is it gets right down the car action. So, let's fire up the GoPro. Overhead shot of the, the full set. Very simple Matchbox motorway set. Um, just a very short set. And I've only got one power controller plugged in. Let me show you. This, this is how it all works. That cog there drives that spring that moves those cars. Now it's all so simple, isn't it? Now you see it. And on the back, here we go. What's this? Piece of ordinary cardboard I put up. Let's take you down at low level. This stuff here, tip some out is called Model Makers Lycan. It's used in model railways, but as you can see, it makes very good hedges and fills in gaps. This is the back of the board again. It's just a piece of cardboard I've used. And if I bring you over the set, you'll see how thin the buildings are. Put that around like that. And there's the soup tin. So if I did put that on there, you see, which I will do, and I will show you how I was doing the drifts. Oh, wrong way. Here we go. As you see, the cars drift really well. I can go back the other way. But this is the noise it makes. It's a horrific noise. So they'll almost drift at any speed. And the next bit of this movie, I'm now going to play it backwards because I've got to tidy this all up. But the way you'll see it is it will look like I've, I've built it all in one go. That's the dog who's seen a cat. <laughs>
I'll show you is how I make the cars drift. The cars get pulled around the track with a little pin stuck underneath. There we go. Little pin. And if you only stick one at the front of the car, then what happens is it, it tends to uh, drift. The Matchbox motorway tell you, uh, tell you to stick two pins, one there and one there, but then the car won't move. Put a pin there and you get this fantastic slippy slidey action. Thank you so much for your great comments, really appreciate it. And um, any suggestions, please put them in the comments box. And for those of you who are addicted to these, um, rest assured I'm going to keep on making them, certainly for a little while longer, until you're desperately hooked. Bye for now.